Hey, hey, peace, my flowers. How is everybody doing in the garden? I hope everybody is having a great new year. Y'all know I don't celebrate to the spring, but whatever, it's 2023. So we're gonna do some practice work using this silicone pad that lets you do some bead work. It also gives you steps to do an application process. It has these wonderful shapes where you can do application process in French. You got your almond shape, your oval, your square oval, your square, your stiletto. Excuse me, guys, sorry. Your stiletto, your ballerina, and your coffin, your round nails. Then it gives you a 12-step prep and scope. It has a little centimeter ruler, these little shapes that you can use to make little 3D pieces. And then you have three-inch shape. So a three inch shape ruler. So you have a seven centimeter ruler and a three inch ruler. So we are going to just go on here and do a little bit of light practice work. Um, so I'm going to start off with doing a little bead work and I'm gonna make my own acrylic using these two nude acrylics. One is from Two Guys, one is from Valentino. And then I have this little pink uh, acrylic clear acrylic I got from that seminar I did back in October last year and we're gonna just make that up and just create our own little colors just to new color just to make to practice with so with this mat guys you can wipe the mat off with acetone and um, to clean it smooth when you are done with it um, and you can use it over and over and over again so it is good for practice work It is good to practice some bead shaping this is our acrylic color that we are going to be using ain't she kind of cute y'all so we are going to start by just placing her right in the center of our numbered nail structure and we are going to start with right between three and two and it has four numbers so it goes from one two three to four one being at the tip three being the base four being that middle which is kind of like where you build your apex at and that is how you will build that structure. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight um, of the number structures, and then it has eight unnumbered structures that you can use to practice French. So I just wanted to show you guys what that color was gonna look like with that swatch. And then we're gonna go in and we are gonna do our first bead, which is going to be a large bead. Then after that large bead, so the whole point is I think try to keep my bead within the circle within that black line if you go outside of the black line guys it is absolutely fine you just want to get your bead to be structured to the shape of the circle that's really all you want to do so you want to get that bead to be that that size y'all i'm so sorry i literally just ate and had to do this recording so i can get this video posted so i'm sorry if i am burping and i have the hiccups and all that because i don't know what's going on but anyway we are now going to do our second bead which is going to be our medium bead which would typically be like the middle of your nail and of course you guys know the smallest bead is always your cuticle area don't forget that guys your smallest bead is always for your cuticle area so when you are dipping your brush in your monomer, the less that you swipe your brush, the more monomer you will have your brush on your brush, the bigger your bead will be that you pick up. When you pick your when you put your brush in the monomer and you um, let's say you put your brush in the monomer, you lay it to the side, you flip it, you flip it, you flip it. You're basically getting as much monomer off of there as possible. But of course you're keeping some on there. This is what you would use to get your smallest bead. As you guys see, I zoomed in a little bit because I felt like you guys were not close enough. Like I wasn't giving y'all a good enough view. So I said, let me bring it in for them, you know, because we need to be able to see what's going on here. So like I was saying, guys, the more that you wipe your brush, my bad, y'all, my earpiece died, but the <laughs> It's always something going on, y'all. This Mercury Retrograde has just been getting with me. But the more that you wipe your brush off, the less um, of a bead you're going to have. You're going to have the smallest bead possible. So just keep in mind that when you dip your brush in your monomer, the less that you wipe it, the more monomer is going to be on your brush. The bigger the bead you will be able to pick up. The more that you wipe it and the least amount of monomer that you have on there is going to determine how small of a bead you're going to pick up. So 
Just keep that in mind when you are doing your practice work on a pad, on a hand, a finger, a nail, a real person, yourself, whoever, whatever. Um, that monomer to acrylic ratio is very, very important. It is something that I have learned over the course of these last two years of doing nails, watching other professionals, nail enthusiasts, and then also doing it myself. I feel like with anything when you're learning something new, you can listen to somebody, but if it's something where you can put it into practice to see if it really works yourself, do it to see if it works, guys. So I am going to, after we do our bead work, which is what you see, what you guys see here, we have our large, medium, and small beads, which I think we did a pretty good job. We are going to go back in where I did that swatch for you all, and we are going to use our French looking structured nail. We are going to start at number three, which would technically be our cuticle area. You, it says to start at number one, which is where you, you you would typically start, if you were doing a nail form, you would start at the tip of the nail and build from that area back. But I am doing this with the intent in my mind that there is a nail tip on the nail so I can start from the cuticle area if I desire. You can do whatever method or technique you want. If you wanna start where the two is, and work your way down to the one, you can. If you wanna start where the two is and work your way back to the three, you can. It, whatever technique works for you, whatever is best for you, that is the whole point of doing the practice work is to find what works best for you. What is the easiest? What is the most efficient? What is the most satisfying for you? Just what works best for you? Do what's best for you guys, okay? You can watch as many people as you want but you and put as many techniques into play as you want. And all it does is to help you find your own niche and what works best for you. So this is our first practice application on the finger structure. Well, the I don't know why I keep calling it the French structure, but I guess it's because of the way the tip is curved. It's making me think of a French nail. But we're just going to go back in with that fourth bead, which is what we're doing here. We're just building a little apex here. Since it's not a real nail, we're not going to make it too big of an apex, but we're going to build one because we're doing practice work. Don't skip the steps of the practice work. You deprive yourself when you do that, okay? So after we do that one... We are going to do one more and I'm going to let you guys watch that. And then after I do that one, we're just basically going to go over to the other side of that. And we're going to do one more application of that. Then we're going to get in and do a little bit of shaping on a couple of these um, shaped fingers. And then we're going to do an actual set on my nails, which was my first set of the new year. I'll be back, guys. me day and night I'm sorry no you just don't make me feel right I never meant to make you cry you were right just leave me be I'm not gonna put up the fight 
All right, y'all. So my phone died a little bit and I had to charge it. So I missed the other. Um, I didn't even do the other step. We're just going to go straight into our hand and we're going to start with our oval shape. And I am starting right again where the between the two and the one area. And I'm just going to start there and I'm going to flush that down. Then I'm going to go to my cuticle area and use my smallest bead. Flush that down. Do my tip. You flush that back. Or flush it down to whatever whichever technique works best for you but i like to flush it back then tap it don't forget guys you want to tap as you're doing this even though this is not an actual finger you still need to practice that tapping technique and you know applying and structuring and building so this is to help you learn to build i think this is good for shaping but this is also good to help you learn to build for when you're using nail forms this is good for when you're using tips because it's teaching you application process but this is also very good for teaching you shaping for when you want to do when you want to use nail forms or things of that nature so it's all around good practice work so that was our oval shape that we did now we're going to go in with our square oval as i like to call it square oval shape we are going to do the same thing we are going to build from the middle from the uh three from the two to the one a little bit and then we're going to build from the three which is the cuticle area flush that down build from our tip push that back and we are just going to do a few shapes here i think our last shape that we're going to do was um stiletto um i don't remember guys i'm doing a voiceover after i've done the, i've done the recording so i'm trying to remember that day and how i did everything before fast forwarding because sometimes when i do my voiceover guys i'm literally doing my voiceover as i'm watching the video i'll record assemble the clips speed it up to where i need to be and then i'll just do my voiceover and try to remember the steps as i did them that day when i can clearly watch the video to see what i did but I don't always like to do that. I don't know why. Don't be judging me, y'all. But we are just going to build on a few more nails. That's going to be that. Then we are going to wipe our pad down with some, I think I did alcohol and I used acetone. And then I used some Clorox wipes to sanitize my pad. As you can see, it says wipe the mat with acetone acetone after each set. Okay, so stiletto was not the last one we did, guys ballerina is going to be the last nail that we did i did the so for the oval nail i did the medium shape for the squoval nail i did a medium shape for our stiletto we're going to do a long nail for our ballerina coffin nail we are going to do a short nail that's going to be that and then i will be back guys so we can do our application on our hand okay Oh yeah, y'all, I forgot to tell you, you can just pop all this stuff right off before you even clean it with the acetone. Look at how it just slides right off. Just, it's so easy to use. I mean, forget a finger. Well, don't forget a finger, but 
This is so easy. Let's clean it now. And now we are going to do our own set. So I'm recording this part of the video a second time because apparently the first time did not stay, guys. So as you guys know, this is going to be our first set of 2023. And I am going to be using this pink acrylic that I made. And I made a nude color kind of acrylic that has some um, reflective glitter pieces in it. So we are going to be going for a very simple shooting star look. So this is the nude color I did and this is the pink color I created. I did again both of these colors and even though you see this nudish color in this Valentino jar, it is just because I had very, very little of their classic nude left which is in this color scheme and i didn't want to throw the jar away so i just reused it but this is not a valentino color this is a mixture of a few different colors i had to get a lighter color because i was looking for more of a not this color but the pinkish one i was trying to go for a bubblegum pink nudish color and that is not a new color that I currently have at the moment, but I was able to achieve it by combining some acrylics together. So we are just gonna be using these two color acrylics and a clear acrylic. And we are going to do, our thumb is going to be an ombre nail. Our middle finger is going to be a French nail. We are going to have two solid pink nails, which are going to be our index and ring finger. And then our pinky is going to be using more of the um, brownish nude color. And we are going to apply some stickers to our nails. And that is how we are going to achieve our shooting star look. Um... I'm really just trying to, if I'm being honest, y'all, I'm a little disturbed and a little upset because my voiceover that I did already was like really good and I said a lot and I'm now like, I don't even remember what I said, but anyway, so for the arm right now, we are going to go in at the cuticle area with the pinkish color and we are just going to flush that out. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could place your stickers on the acrylic and then encapsulate that with clear acrylic. But we're not doing that today, but you would just use a little bit less of the colored acrylic, apply that in a thin layer, put your stickers, do whatever design you want it, and then you could encapsulate it with the clear acrylic and then just go from there. Um, but we're not doing that today. We're going to actually put our stickers on top. But there are so many different methods and techniques that you can use to achieve a look. So just because you see a person do it one way, does not mean that that's the way that you have to do it it's basically like an overview they're giving you an idea of how you can do something or just an idea of how they achieved a look doesn't mean that that's the way that you have to achieve that look so it's just like a um a uh blueprint is the word i was looking for so as you guys see we just did our ring finger with that pink acrylic color and y'all i was loving i was loving the way i blended these colors to get this pink acrylic nudish color it was just giving me bubble gum okay <laughs> and now we're gonna go in on our pinky with that nude reflective glitter color that i made so the reflective pieces that you guys see is actually from the glitz accessories and such december subscription box they had this really pretty um clear reflective glitter in there and i just added that to the mixture that i made so that is what those reflective pieces are and i'm sorry that i don't have a video guys of me blending these acrylics um so i don't remember what acrylics that i used to create these looks because i did it off camera and i was really rushing i actually did this acrylic before I thought of the idea of the look I wanted to do because I used this acrylic for something else first. 
so I do not have it on camera what the colors were that I used to create this color scheme for these acrylics so I'm really sorry about that guys but you don't have to go with a pink or a nude you can use any color nude you want you can use any colors you want this can you can use white you can do black and white you can you can do this look however you want to do it it's up to you guys this is again like i said just a blueprint just to give you an idea of how i achieved this design what you want to do is what you want to do so I'm going in on my index finger and applying my acrylic and just flushing that out towards the cuticle area just to make sure that the tip of my nail is as thin as possible um, because if the tip of my nails are very very thick it's typically harder for me to pick things up and the thinner that I can have it um, like not super thin but the thinner that I can have the tip the easier it is for me to pick things up when I have very very long nails these are not very, very long, but they're long enough, y'all, okay? So, that they can be in the way sometimes when you're trying to pick up something small off the floor, like a damn coin or something, okay? So, just keep that in mind. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to finish applying this acrylic to this index finger, and then we're going to go in on our middle finger and when you are doing a smile line you want to start with the base of your smile line let that solidify and you want to file that and you're filing it to get it as sharp as possible and as crisp as possible because when you go to smooth that um not just the smile line when you go to smooth that nail out okay when you go to smooth out the nail that is your French nail that you are creating without using a polish, it's going to be rough looking. And you guys are going to see in a minute. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be bulky. You're probably going to be like, uh, this is not going to work out. But when you file it down with either a coarse sanding bit, a tornado bit, a um, five in one drill bit, you know, the coarse end or to just. To, to, Get it down to where you need to be and then you smooth it out your lines are going to be a whole lot more crisp so what i find is that when you sharpen up those lines and then when you clean everything up the lines are just so much more profound if you don't it's absolutely okay but your lines are not going to be as crisp as when you sharpen them before you do each step so Let's just say you're going in for a simple French and you do your smile line and you just don't sharpen that up and then you do your white tip and then you file all that down. Your smile line is going to be there but it probably won't be as crisp, as crisp and as sharp as if you were to file it with let's say a nail file or you can use your e-file and just sharpen that up. You don't have to use a nail file. You can use whatever kind of file you want to to sharpen up. Um, well not whatever kind of file you want to but between a hand file and an e-file. I would use a small e-file, um, maybe like a cone bit or uh, one of the real slender bits that's like, like a cuticle drill bit or something just to clean up that smile line. Um, but if you don't sharpen it up, the lines are not going to be as crisp as they could be. I have done this through trial and error, so I'm just speaking to you guys from my experience and also from seeing other nail enthusiasts and nail professionals do this. I understand why they file the smile line before doing anything else. So we are going to go in now with a eggnog kind of white-ish color here. And you are going to just apply that right at the base of your smile line. You're going to clean that up as best as possible because we are going to apply some glitter. We are going to cure this and then we are going to go in with a clear, a clear, a clear acrylic. We are going to let that solidify and we're going to go in with the reflective uh, nude acrylic. And we are going to apply that as our French tip area. And then we are going to smooth and sand everything down. We are going to file these bad boys. We are going to shape them. And then I'll be back, guys, shortly so we can do our design. Okay. I'm not lonely when solo and solo exploring what I need. Cause dozens of times it's 
swear that I knew in the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom was scanty. Doesn't mean I was broken, so open. I gave and I gave until empty. Got it all back, got it all back by myself. Now nobody can tempt me. Yeah. If I turn her off, you know, I'm breathing sitting on my own. Yeah. Can't keep making exits from the pressure. Lessons after lessons. Flaws can't keep love Built from a love song No, I'm not only with solo and solo Exploring what I need Cause dozens of times I swear that I knew in the wisdom The wisdom, the wisdom was candy Doesn't mean I was broken so open I gave and 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 I
I know y'all. I'm just playing. I'm sorry. I had I couldn't I couldn't not talk about Big Brother UK and not break out with a British accent or something of that nature. Australian or something, you know. But um so I um <laughs> I've been watching those on YouTube, right? And then at night when I go to bed, um, I sometimes like to play soft music or I might just watch like nail videos or stuff like that till I fall asleep or my eyes get heavy, you know, read a book, you know, whatever. And lately, the last few nights, I have been watching five minute craft videos, DIY videos, y'all. <laughs> Why are those videos so horribly done like they do <laughs> okay so here's what's been happening so I've been the ones I've been seeing have been like makeup DIYs or whatever right and I'm watching them and I'm like there's no fucking way excuse my language y'all but I'm like there's no freaking way people are doing this crap like there's one thing where a girl had like tanned her skin or something and her tan was like missing in a spot she took a cup of coffee that she had that she was supposed to be drinking stuck a tampon in the coffee and then like rubbed it on her and it was supposed to like tan her so i'm like okay great we're doing blackface like ooh, what's going, what's going on here five minute crafts but long story short, what it did was, as I was watching it, it just made me, I, I was like, I have to try some of this bull crap out to see if this shit works. Because what is, who is sitting in the five minute crafts DIY beauty hacks, the home video, just their videos. Who is sitting in their studio and putting these concepts together like when they have the pimple videos or like blister videos or corn videos, like the way they be putting the makeup on the people to make them look like they have a blister or a pimple, like you're not going to know that what they just put on there, that's not going to happen for me in the same instance that it just happened for this person because that's freaking makeup on their face, sir, ma'am. Anyway, but... So I've been thinking about reviewing five minute craft videos because what is this buffoonery that they have on YouTube? And I want to try some of their stuff out because I'm like, I know I'm not the only one that watches these videos and be like, there's no freaking way I would ever do some of this stuff. I know I'm not going to try y'all because they crazy. They're freaking crazy. But some of the stuff that I saw, it was like hacks that had me like, hmm, I wonder if this would work. Anyway, y'all, <laughs> I, I freaking hate five minute crashes video. It's like, it's like a, a train wreck you can't help to watch as the train is approaching the wall and it's about to crash into. Like, you just can't help but to see what's going to happen next. It's like a beautiful disaster. Like, you know it's about to be a mess, but you can't take your eyes off this mess that you're watching to see. Are they really doing this? Like, what? Why? Anyway, so that is one of the things I've, I've, I've been thinking about. I'm still, guys, I am like, it's weird because I'm doing a theme called Nails and Nostalgia. And I've been watching a lot of nostalgic things. And I feel like because it's Nails and Nostalgia, it's something that's going to make you feel a little happy on the inside. And I've been trying to get back to my happiness. I don't know if you guys saw my other video I did. I was talking a little bit about, about my mental health and my depression and anxiety and all those things. So I'm just now starting to feel like I'm getting back to myself. I just started this workout challenge that's for the next six months. Um... And I really fell off of doing a lot of things that helped me to recenter myself, find peace and things of that nature. So I'm getting back to those things and I'm working on programming my brain and my mental so that when I feel like that again, I don't stop doing or or utilizing my coping mechanisms that make me feel better. So my Nails and Nostalgia series is taking me way longer than I expected. And I'm so, so, so sorry for that, guys. But I have so many great ideas for things I want to do. 
I feel like I'm one person and I'm trying to do so much between like my nail channel and then like now I'm trying to get my fitness and my cooking channel up, which is going to be like all together in one. But getting those channels up, I just feel like I'm a little overwhelmed, but I'm fine. I'm just a little overwhelmed with how do I get everything done, but I'm going to get it done. So I have the five minute craft video series that I'm going to start because y'all, I got to try some of this crap out. There's no way I can't like, because why? Then, so Evie, who is long hair, pretty nails, um, she is a nail enthusiast slash vlogger blogger on YouTube and I've been following her for years. So... She's always done, I've always watched her videos and saw nails that I wanted to try and do myself. So I was just sitting at home one day and I was watching one of her most recent videos and I was like, Evie's always recreating other people's videos, but do a lot of people recreate her videos? Because she has a lot of really good designs that she has created. So I was thinking about doing a series where I recreate some of my favorite nail texts or nail enthusiasts, nail vloggers, some of their designs with Evie being one. So she has this like pink winter look I think I'm going to do. It kind of looks like, um, you know how with the lava lamp they kind of have that middle clear center and then you have the color block at the, the, the base of the nail and then the tip. So it's kind of like that. So I'm thinking about doing that first and then... I don't know who else I'm going to do, but there are a few people who I follow that I really, really like, and I would like to recreate some of their looks, but Evie is my top choice to start with, so that is something else that I'm going to be looking into doing, really just to have content to build and create and to upload to really hold you guys over in the meantime while I get some other things going on. I also want to do a nail series with like um, nail education, like nail vocabulary, so, you know, just have it where we just sit down, go over a little bit of nail history. We learn a few new nail terms because I'm still educating myself on nail terms and things of that nature. And, you know, we learn and grow together. So I've been having some, like, really good ideas in my head. And hopefully me saying this, nobody does this before I do it. Because, you know, you can talk about things before you're really ready to do it, which is why I typically don't like to talk about stuff before I'm ready to do them because you don't want to put it out there before you're ready but fuck it I've already done it so it's here this is just to give you guys an idea of the things that have been floating around in my head um I'm also working on getting to so I was gonna go to the Goodwill store but I've been hearing some really negative things about Goodwill over the last you know year or so so I don't really know how I feel about that so I'm trying to find a good consignment shop thrift shops and things near me so I live near really good areas that have those so I have those things coming I'm just working on a lot of things guys I'm trying to write everything down in black and white so I can see what I want to do so it's not just in my head and I don't forget because you can plan something in your head but seeing it in black and white helps you to stay focused so that was just me letting you guys know a few things and we are going to get back into these nails now <laughs> okay so we have finished our application process and everything and we of course as you guys know we're always going to go in with our base coat first so you're going to go in with your base coat we are going to cure that and then after you cure it before you apply your stickers guys please take a little bit of alcohol or non-stick non-slip solution and just wipe your nails off to get that little um grit that tacky layer off that normally sticks to the nail when you apply a base coat and the same thing if you're using a non I mean if you're using a tacky layer top coat if it's not a non wipe top coat which means that you don't need to wipe that tacky layer off wipe it off so if your bottle doesn't say non wipe you most likely are going to need to get something to wipe that tacky layer off which is typically just some rubbing alcohol okay so um and then after we do that i'm going to be using some gold and white stars that i'm going to do an overlapping look so i'm going to place the gold and white stars on top of each other and then after that we are going to create some very very simple streaks underneath the stars to create a shooting star effect 
We're gonna apply some glitter on top of it. We're just gonna put some little jewels on our middle finger. That's gonna be our only jewel. I'm lying, it's not gonna be our only jewel finger. We're gonna put jewels on our middle finger and our pinky finger, which is gonna have some jewels and some pearls. And we're gonna have jewels and pearls on our middle finger, which we are going to be using a crescent moon with an, a hanging star. But I'm not gonna let the star hang. I'm gonna actually get it to stick to my nail. The reason being is because I do a lot of things where my nails can get snag onto things and I didn't want it to snag onto anything and then next thing I know the whole damn nail pops off. So this particular time, because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of things between this set and me taking this off, I did not let it hang. So sometimes when I do my nail sets, I like to think about what I'm going to have, you know, coming up in the next week or two between one set and another. And I'll determine sometimes what my jewel pieces will be, whether they'll be big, small, hanging, you know, things of that nature. So again, guys, I'm going in with some gold and white star pieces. We are going to be creating a shooting star effect. I am going to be doing a moon also on my thumb finger with some shooting stars. And that's going to be our look, y'all. And I really enjoy this New Year look. I mean, I didn't really get to do the, some of the sets that I was seeing for New Year, which were like clock themes and things of that nature. But they gave me some wonderful ideas. I saw some looks that I want to recreate that even though it's not New Year's, I just want to try them just to see if I can do them. So, yeah challenge yourself guys if you are new to the nail journey don't be scared just trust the process just practice you can be a mess today and be great tomorrow i've been on this journey for two years and when i look at my pictures from when i first started compared to now i am not where i want to be but i'm nowhere near where i started so I thank you guys for making it this far in the video. And if you have made it this far in the video, you already know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like button. Please subscribe. You can share the content. It just helps me to get into YouTube's algorithm even more. Although I don't know what they doing with me. I guess because I'm small time. They like, girl, we ain't giving you no time. But whatever. And what did I say? Follow, like, subscribe, share. I said follow like I'm on Instagram. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, guys. All that good stuff. Hit the notification bell so you guys know whenever I have any announcements coming up or when I'm posting a new video or heck, when I'm about to go live and just come on here and talk to y'all because eventually I'm going to get to that point where I'm just going to pop up on here and be like, hey, y'all, let's have an impromptu nail session, okay? But in the meantime, in between time, you guys make sure you are staying warm, you are drinking your water, you are taking your vitamins, your multivitamins, your vitamin C, your ester C, your zinc, keeping your immune system strong, you are getting your rest, you are waking up rejuvenated, you are waking up happy and grateful for a new day. You are moving your body, you are practicing some yoga, doing some dance, just enjoying life, spending time with your loved ones, hugging your loved ones, loving your loved ones, eating some good food, eating some vegetables, drinking your water again, enjoying time with yourself, traveling, practicing some self-care, some self-love, kindness, human being humane, loving humanity, embracing the good and the bad, accepting your failures so you can reach success, just all those good things, guys. Just remember that you need a negative and a positive. You need balance in life and you can't have the bad without the good, the good without the bad, yin without the yang. You just you need a counterpart, okay? So when you feel like life is hard or the worst is you know, the worst is getting to you, just remember there is always a rainbow at the end of the storm. There's always something beautiful that comes from something ugly. Okay? So in the meantime, guys, just remember to embrace yourself, hug yourself, love yourself. Practice some self-care, practice some self-love. Because if you can't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? And I'm out. Happy New Year.
with the summer days. Oh, got me feeling dizzy from the summer haze. Cause we got the sunshine by the poolside. Such a fun time living for the hot life. We bring the right vibes and the tan lines. Keep a free mind, yeah. Cause we got the sunshine by the poolside. Such a
Bottle. 